This video is to show how to repair large sections of Kimlite using Technology Fleet Products Quick Patch System. For best results, the trailer temperature should be above 75 degrees. This is a section of the wall that's going to be replaced. We will cut out a section that goes from the scuff plate to the E-track. Notice there are some areas that are filled in with silicon and others that have been fastened with rivets. These are ineffective ways to repair a trailer wall. Notice in this section, the rivets that were holding the fiberglass have been ripped out of the wall. Rivets stick out from the wall and are easy to catch with a pallet. Also, patches like this will not seal the wall and many companies do not allow these and will not load the trailer. Gashes can easily be fixed using 3 inch or 6 inch quick patch. Tools that you may need to have on hand to do a good job. A heat gun or hair dryer to heat the back of the patch if the weather is really cold. It will make it stick faster. An oscillating tool, a cutoff saw, razor saw for the fiberglass, tape measure, reversible miter saw for shaping the foam wall, pry bar, and spiral saw. A 48 inch sheetrock square is good to have so that you can get straight lines that are square with the floor of the trailer. Lots of load locks will help keep the new panels in place until the adhesive sets up. For faster results, build wall presses out of half inch plywood panels and attach 2x4 adjustable legs so that they will stand above the scuff plate. This will save man hours and result in a better quality panel repair. Take measurements for the new panel. Draw your cut lines to make sure they are square with the floor by using the large sheetrock square. When you measure for the height, make sure you include about three quarters behind the E-track. This is where the new panel will go under this top flap. When you are cutting the panel, make sure you have a big work area with good ventilation and wear a mask. For your lines to be straight and accurate, measure five to six points from the factory cut side of the new panel to be cut. You can use a cutoff saw to make the cut. Make sure that you put a 2x4 under the fiberglass to make it easier to cut. To help keep cuts straight, make sure you have some way to support your hand while cutting. It is best to move the cut panel rolled up. It will be easier to handle and you will be less likely to damage the piece. Plus, it will be out of your way until you need it. Remove most of the screws from the E-Track, but leave some in on the bottom. We will use the E-Track as our guide for the top cut to remove the damaged section. This cut, you can use the cutoff saw or the oscillating tool. Use the E-Track as the guide. It will give you a good straight cut. Make sure that you do not cut deeper than an eighth of an inch or you will slice the support post. It is best to cut the bottom of the damaged section about an inch and a half to two inches above the scuff plate. This will allow you to clear the lip on the back of the scuff plate. This makes it easier to get out the damaged section off the wall. Again, do not cut more than an eighth of an inch into the wall. The line that you scribed earlier for your side cuts. Make sure that you cut the fiberglass under the E-Track area about three quarters to the top of the E-Track space. This will allow for the new panel to slide up underneath the wall. After making all of the cuts, use a small pry bar to gently pull the fiberglass away from the foam. If you're careful at this stage, you will not pull a lot of foam from the wall. This will save you more time. Another option is to use a drywall taping knife to strip the fiberglass away without damaging the foam. Section removed. Now we will work on the bottom strip and rivets. We will fill in holes with foam later. Normally, the bottom strip just pulls out, but with the rivets, we will have to saw them off. You can use the cutoff saw or the oscillating tool for this.
After you've sawed the rivets off, the pry bar is handy for getting this section off. After you have removed the bottom strip, push the body of the rivets out so that the new panel will fit flat on the scuff plate. In order to keep the R value in the trailer wall, we must foam the voids, just the ones that are large or deep. Filling in voids can be easy if you use the right kit. This kit has adjustable flow control and is reusable. It has a low expansion rate, so there is less waste. If the wall looks like this, you will have to clean it up so it is smooth and flat. Remove anything that may keep the new panel from contacting the foam surface. You can use a razor saw to trim the foam down to the scuff plate. Before you install a new panel, make sure the top groove of the scuff plate is cleaned out. This will make it easier to install the new panel. Pull out the edge of the fiberglass. This is so the new panel will fit underneath the upper wall section. This will keep the water from seeping behind the new section. With the earlier cuts, and pulling out the section of the fiberglass, you've created a flap where the other new wall section will fit underneath. That'll keep it waterproof and tight. Use an air hose to clean off any remaining dust or particles on the wall before you spray on the adhesive. At this point, we're gonna place the panel in the scuff plate groove and line it up on both ends. Right there is okay, right there is fine, but right here to here, that's going to need to be cut out right there. You know, that gap's okay. And then from here, all the way down to here needs to be shaved out just a little bit. Now you can hold this thing flat and take your tool and just cut right along here. You want the panel to be flush with the wall. You will have to trim anywhere you get an overlap. If you want to save a step, after you do the measuring step, you can cut the new panel width and cut the length a little long. Then sandwich the new panel over the old damage section before you make the top and bottom cuts. At this point, make your end cuts through both the old and the new panels. They should match up perfectly. Before you mount the panel on the wall, you need to spray it off with air to get rid of all the dust. In order for the adhesive to bond the fiberglass to the foam, you need to clean all the surface of the panel to remove any grease and grime. After you have set the panel into the scuff plate groove and aligned both ends, Spray the fiberglass adhesive on the wall and on the panel to be stuck to the wall. Use the same kind of applicator gun that you did with the foam. If you use the foam applicator gun, make sure that you clean it out first with a cleaning can. You cannot blend the two chemicals together. After you have sprayed on the adhesive, work the top of the new panel into the slot that you worked on earlier.
this is where you put the wall press boards together with the load locks to keep the wall flat against the foam. Notice that he's got the load locks working from the top and the bottom. If you work them from the top and the bottom, it'll even out the panels. Otherwise, you'll get a ripple in your panels. After you have set all of your wall presses and your load locks to get even distribution across the wall, reattach the E-track across the bottom section. This will hold the top down tight. After you've attached your E-track, you'll need to wait between four and eight hours to be able to remove the wall presses. The wall presses have been removed and now it's time to put the three inch tape on the edges. Before you apply the three inch quick patch tape, make sure the wall is very clean. All the grease and grime needs to be off of it. When you're putting on the three inch tape, work from the bottom and create a wedge space to be able to slide the three inch patch inside the scuff plate groove. Then you work your way up to the top, smoothing it out as you go. Make sure you remove the E-track so that you can get the three inch tape all the way up to the slice at the top. Peel off a little of the backing for the quick patch and then stuff the patch down into the groove, making sure it's not sticking to the wall until you want it to. It's kind of tricky, but you can do it. After you've applied the three inch quick patch tape, make sure you use the brush to brush the wall next to the patch. This is to make sure the edge sealer will bond to the fiberglass. It's very important that you brush it very well. Also, brush along the bottom of the panel at the scuff plate you're going to run a bead of edge sealer down that scuff plate where the new piece fits in. edge sealer you want to put just enough to make a good transition between the wall and the patch. If you put too much on it'll run. You do not want it to run but you do want it to be able to overlap the top of the patch. If you make a mistake it's no problem go back and fix it. You can wipe it off. Now you've completed putting on a large panel using quick patch systems three inch tape and the edge sealer.